Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome to lecture three or day three of our automation testing with Selenium C Sharp using .NET Core from Complete Basics. So we have been talking about the Selenium C Sharp with .NET Core and introduction in our first lecture. And then we talked about how we can actually set up the Selenium C Sharp with Visual Studio. And this time we are actually going to see how we can write a very, very super simple program using Selenium C Sharp and how we can leverage the power of Selenium with C Sharp combo and how we can uh, automate an application using it. So that's what we're going to be discussing in this particular lecture. And this lecture is mostly like, like many other lectures that I have already discussed in many of my courses. But this lecture has one difference, which is because this is some, something going to be like a basic scenarios that we're going to be discussing. So we'll be talking a lot of details on the basics of how Selenium is going to open up the browser and how it's going to identify the element on a particular control like locators and how we are going to identify the particular control using various different locators and stuff. But again, as I told in this video, we are going to talk about how we can basically work with a us with Selenium C Sharp using a super simple program like what we're going to write this time. And then we'll talk about locators in much greater detail in our upcoming videos. And we'll also discuss how we can use a different methods or custom methods to create control uh, methods. And then we can extend that control methods and stuff. But in this video, we are basically going to fully focus on writing a very, very super simple code. So instead of wasting much of time in theories, let's jump into action and see how we can automate that. So this time we are actually going to take a different application instead of using the Exit Automation platform that we took in our earlier video. Rather, I'm actually going to take one of the demo application which is available from the uh, ASP.NET website, which is nothing but the demo wf.aspnetawesome.com. So this is one of the interesting apps that I saw and I feel like this is going to be something we really, really require. As you can see in here, this is the uh, website which I was talking about. As you can see in here, here you have like an, uh, different types of controls like autocomplete text box, uh, drop downs, button groups, uh, radio list uh, and check boxes and uh, date picker, combo box, Ajax drop downs and you can see that there are different combinations of drop downs available. You can choose, I mean, you can automate any one of them whichever is rendered on the DOM using Selenium is much, much easier to automate that. So yeah, these are the controls that you have basically. And then you already have a uh, multi-select controls like this, and then you have a pop-up control, something like that, and open model uh, controls, something like that. And similarly, there is a grid controls, and you can see there is a grid with CRUD operation. There is a drag and drop operation that you can do, uh, and then click, and you can see that once you click that, you can just move it around. And then there are different controls that you can see over here. So every time you just scroll this particular uh, page, you get a different control combinations. I mean, we're not going to discuss like all the controls and of how you can automate it because it's going to be pretty much exactly the same idea of how you can automate with Selenium C Sharp. If you automate one control or maybe a couple of controls, then you will get the idea of how you can automate it basically. Again, we'll be discussing about automating the custom controls uh, that you have because all the controls are not exclusively available from the HTML itself. There are many custom controls available. So you can extend that custom control using writing your own custom control methods in Selenium C Sharp .NET Core. I mean, we'll talk about that later. But today, first time, we are going to first talk about the locators and we'll see how we can actually automate these kinds of controls. So as I told you, this is the website which I'm going to automate this time. So I'm just going to go and you can see that the go to URL, we have this particular URL. So it will open the application for us. And now, uh, because Selenium has to interact with a web page, we need to somehow tell Selenium that, hey, Selenium, you actually need to open up the browser, which we already did in our earlier video. And then we need to tell Selenium that, hey, Selenium, can you just go and find a control for me on that particular page. So basically we are telling Selenium that, hey Selenium, you need to perform some actions that we are going to tell you so that you can do that on that particular element of that particular page. So basically Selenium does maybe two operations. I think just two operations. One is it opens up the web drivers and all those stuffs for us like a prerequisite. And once it opens, 
it then helps to identify or maybe perform an action on that particular control that's it this is the two operation it just opens up the browser and set up all the environments for us and it knows how to talk with the web browser i mean i'm just telling all these details in a very very high level like a layman view of saying it and then you can perform an action on that particular control using selenium so these are the two things which it do but the assertion part like whether this particular control exists or whether i typed a value in there or whether the checkbox has been checked or not all those assertion operations you cannot do with selenium basically selenium from selenium you can try to see if the particular control exists or not you can grab the details but assertions you need to do with an assertion library or maybe a testing library like nunit or ms test or in java there is test ng and jnunit something like that so you need to go with that fashion yeah so this is this is what it is i mean over here we are going to just perform an action on the particular control using selenium so enough theory again so i will jump in to see uh, how we can identify this particular control let's say if i want to type some value into this auto complete uh, text box so it says something like try o something like that or maybe you can you can see if once i try uh, type this try o and uh, space uh, i think there was something came and then just disappeared yeah you can see that that something is coming tomato yeah there you go so basically it's like an auto uh, complete con uh, text box so if you type it correctly you get this particular value if not you won't uh, so you can basically it's an input text box so if you just right click on your browser and if you go to the inspect uh, like that and you can see that it's an input type and it has an ID which is pretty good not many controls does have IDs and it has the ID so we should really appreciate uh, here and then uh, we're going to perform an action on this particular control because it's an input type. It's pretty straightforward, actually. So I'm saying pretty straightforward because we are going to see some of the complex controls later on. And then you will see that, oh, my God, this is so ridiculous in Selenium. But not yet. Uh, we have a very good control at the point at the moment. So I'm just going to copy this guy and I'm going to go over here. And now we have opened the browser. So we know how to interact with an UI element or and control uh, in selenium on the dom you need to somehow find the element on the particular dom so finding that particular element is basically going to happen using a method called find element really simple yeah so you're going to do something like this driver so this is a chrome driver that we have found in our earlier video uh, driver dot find element so this is the method you have and if you just put dot you can see there are various different method comes in for the particular driver so these are the few methods which is available for this particular driver control which is very good news we don't really have to uh, remember all the method names uh, and it's also very very straightforward you can see that's find element and if you open up the braces on that particular um, find element method uh, you get a class saying by so by is basically a uh, it's like a class which helps to locate and control on the dom using a different locator strategy so by is basically a locator strategy mechanism class you can name it so if i just put by and if i hit dot you can see that it brings up the different ways that you can identify a control like xpath or css selector or id or name or link text class name css selector i don't know equals is nothing but basically id that's what you should be worried about so today we're going to identify using the id control right if you remember i was telling that this is the id control um it identifies that using the id so just go with simple one let's select the id and paste this guy over here and we found the element now very good i mean we identified the element we found it and it is now sitting but we need to basically type a value that like let's say tomato on that particular text box so in order to do that we need to perform a entry of the text on that particular control so in order for entering there is something called like i guess in qdp there is something called as enter text or maybe enter but in here you have an option called send keys so if you perform a send keys then you can uh, type any value that you're looking for let's say tomato um, 
something like that. Is it tomato right spelling? I don't know. Um, let me just type Toma tomato. I'm sorry, tomato. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, tomato. So if you just type that value, it's gonna type the tomato for you, and you're good. You're pretty good in this point. And so the value has been entered for you. That's it. Why not just give a shot and see how it works? I mean, you can do this way and there is another way which I will tell you in a couple of minutes, but you can see that this is one way of doing it. So we found the element using this particular ID and then we're performing an action using the send keys method. Yeah, and I'm gonna put a breakpoint over here and I'm gonna go to the test explorer, right click, debug, selected test. So once I do that, Again, we know what is going to happen. It's going to open up a Chrome browser, like how it did in our earlier video. And it hits the breakpoint. It waits for us on that particular breakpoint because we have told Visual Studio, to, hey, Visual Studio, just go and stop there. So you can see that it's loading up. There you go. Uh, the page has been loaded with this new brow, uh, UI, uh, which is the new URL. And now once I do that, you can see that the code has been executed. So behind the scene, you can see that type the value tomato for us. Cool, right? This is what Selenium is doing for us. So we, it identified the element for us. I mean, we identified the element. Uh, and we asked Selenium to perform a send keys and it typed that value for us, which is pretty cool. So it typed the value there, which is, which is what we're looking for. But it has not selected the tomato, uh, this particular thing, right? I mean, once you select it, then only it, it will disappear. But we have not did that yet. Uh, just don't worry about it because we're just starting with Selenium. We don't really have to complicate or over complicate the code yet. So we'll just leave it for now. Similarly, let's take one other control, probably the easiest one. Maybe this one, the checkbox, like the celery or broccoli or... Uh, cauliflower so we can we can choose these uh, controls using this checkbox so what is this checkbox basically doing oh where is that okay it's here so if i just right click inspect the element um uh, sorry if i just go inspect you can see that this particular control can be identified using uh its name something like that so what I'm going to do is like, let's say if I'm just going to type, uh, copy this value. So this time I'm not going to use the ID, but I'm going to use a different locator to select this particular controller and we'll see how it works. So I'm just going to quickly jump into locators uh, over here. But next video, we'll talk about locators in a much detailed fashion. But just bear with me what I'm doing. You can just uh, see what I'm doing. In the next video, you can relate what I'm really talking about. So if I just put a double slash, which means I'm working with an X path, that's why I'm using a, double, a dollar X there. Uh, so it's an X path basically. Uh, and I'm telling Selenium that, hey Selenium, uh, or maybe hey Chrome, uh, identify this input type, double slash input of add class is equal to this one. And if I hit enter, hmm, it's not working. So let's see what it is. Oh, sorry, it's name, it's not the, so you can see that if I use class, basically it won't work. Uh, it should be exactly the same locator. And if I use name, you can see that it actually brings me up many different controls, not just one control, basically. It is bringing me like uh, six controls this time. So six control is something, but the six checkbox, it's actually trying to bring me up over here, which is not the right one, which I'm looking for at the moment. So I want the uh, first one, which is the celery, something like that. So uh, if I just go to this control, you can see that it has this ID uh, with, oh, sorry, this one. And you can see that the celery is the next due control, which has this particular text. So if, if I want to identify the next control or the next sibling of XPath, then I should be using sibling or following sibling. So there is a syntax in XPath called as following sibling which you can actually use to perform this particular action. So you can use something like following sibling colon, I mean, double colon. And if, if you can see that if I just put double colon of div, it automatically brings me up different uh, div controls, which is also pretty good. But now it still hasn't really identified the one which I'm looking for, which is nothing but 
the salary or let you use something like that so which is something i can identify using the text of salary something like that do you see that identified this control right now which is very good i mean that's what i was looking for so now it identifies this control using this particular identifier and now if i just go to my code in visual studio over here you can just do something like driver dot find element by dot and you know what to do now because we're not identifying using an id this time rather we are identifying using an x path so i'm going to use the x path and this is the x path which i'm going to do i'm going to use and this time i'm not going to do a send keys i mean send keys was basically for typing a value just the tomato in our case but rather we are going to use it for performing a click operation so the click is dot of click which is cool and that's it you can see that now we could able to perform a click operation using the x path as you can see over here right uh, in visual studio the more powerful thing is the debugging experience and the the ide itself so what i can do is, is i can just drag this uh, this yellow um, arrow and I can put it on the line which I intend to execute which is awesome and now if I see my uh, my uh, chromes opened using the uh, for the web driver you can see that the salary is not checked yet uh, it's still unchecked and now if I go to my Visual Studio and if I just do an step over you should see this particular checkbox being checked did you see that the salary is being checked right now which means we could able to identify this control we can be able to perform the action over there which is cool and now if i want to uncheck this i mean you basically need to do a click operation again so if i just do um, set the execution pointer there and if i do and step over and now you could see that it's unchecked right now so this is the way that you can identify a control and you can write a very very super simple code using visual studio or something like this so this is basically it about writing a super simple code with selenium so now we have discussed a lot of things this time i mean we already we discussed about how we can um, find an element how we can perform an action like send keys and also a click operation and also we saw how we can use xpath to identify a control and uh, perform an action on the particular ui element and we also saw some new things like following sibling and also how we can iterate through a control using xpath and identify it i mean there are so many ways that you can identify a control which we'll be talking in our next video until then bye